Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud, and today in my Math 8 class, we're going to cover Chapter 1, Lesson 3, which is all about solving equations with variables on both sides. You should have out your spiral notebook opened to a nice clean page with this title at the top. Just like before, step one is going to be to simplify both sides. If you have parentheses, you're going to distribute, and if there are like terms, you're going to combine them together. But you want to do the distribution first. So let's do an example. In our example here, we can multiply in negative 2 times x, and then multiply negative 2 times negative 5. And on this side, we can also multiply 6 times 2, and then we're going to do 6 multiplied by negative 1 half x. So what we're going to get on our next step then is negative 2x plus 10 is equal to 12 minus 3x because half of 6 is 3. So now we're ready to uh, go to the next step. You'll see that on each side it is as simple as it possibly can be. Uh, the 2x and the negative 2x and the 10 cannot be combined. And over on this side, the 12 and the negative 3x cannot be combined. So now we're going to be moving on to step two. Step two is to move all of your variables to one side and the constants to the other side. Uh, the variables include the numbers in front of the variables, and the constants are all of the numbers that don't have a variable attached to them. So I always like to move my variables over to the left. So what I'm going to do is, in order to move it, I'm going to add 3x here, and I'm going to put it underneath the one with the x, because these two can be combined since they're both x's. When we do that, the negative 3x and the positive 3x cancel to 0. Now at the same exact time, I'm going to move my 10 to the other side. And so the 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. So you'll notice what I did here is I moved all my variables over to the left, and I moved all my constants, or the numbers without variables, over to the right. So now I can simplify this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to think about what does 3 minus 2 equal, and that equals 1. And so I'm just going to write x. I don't have to put the, x, the 1 in front of it. And then over on the other side, we have 12 minus 10, which is 2. So you'll notice that we have x by itself now. x is equal to 2. Now, sometimes there's going to be a number in front of the x here. And so step 3, which we don't need to do in this case, but step 3 is to divide or multiply to get x by itself. In this case, there's not a number out in front here, so we don't need to do that step, but um, a lot of times you will have to do that step. Okay, so it's just three simple steps. You want to simplify, you want to move things around, and then you want to divide or multiply depending on what is in front of the x. Now, sometimes you'll encounter some special cases, and so we're going to go ahead and solve this like we normally would. I'm going to draw my line down. I'm going to circle my x's. I see that I have x's on both sides of the equation again. So that means that I need to, uh, I don't need to use do step one because these are already simple, flat, simplified. There's no parentheses and there's nothing to combine. So that means that I'm going to move on to step two, which is to move things around. So I'm going to move over my 4x on both sides. And I'm going to notice something that happens that's kind of weird. Notice that in both cases, these cancel. So I'm not going to bother moving my other, um, my constants around because I have 3 here and I have negative 7 here. Now anytime the variable disappears, like what it did in this example, we need to look at it and see if it's true or false. This is a false statement because 3 does not equal negative 7. Anytime you have a false statement, your answer is going to be no solution. And what no solution means is that it does not matter. Any number that I pick up here to plug in, it's not going to work. 
there's nothing that I could possibly choose that will make this situation true. So that means that there is no real solution. There's nothing on the number line that's going to work for that one. Okay, let's look at example number two. In example number two, I do need to use the distributive property first so that I can simplify that left-hand side. So one half of six is three, so that's gonna be three T, and one half of negative four is negative two, and then the other side does not need to be simplified, so it's gonna stay the same. So uh, I notice that I'm all simplified now, I'm ready to move on to step two, which is to start moving things around. So I'm going to move my 3t over, and I notice that something interesting happens again, and that is that my t's cancel out, just like they did in example number one up here. So what I'm left with this time is I'm left with a negative 2 equals negative 2. So this time, this is a true statement. So that means that my answer is infinitely many solutions. What infinitely many solutions means is that I can choose any number on the number line. Anything is going to work. I could put 100 in here. I could put in 50. I could put in negative 25. It doesn't matter what number I choose. If I plug it into that equation, it's going to be true and it's going to work. Pause the video and take out your RPJ and turn to page 14 for some more examples. Let's take a look at number one. So on number one, I have X's on both sides of the equation. Notice that I can't simplify anything. Everything is as simple as it possibly can be. So I'm ready to move on to step two, which is I need to, means I need to start moving things around. Now I told you that I like to move all of my X's over to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract nine X here and here. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 16 on both sides. And so when we do that, the 9x minus 9x cancel and the 16 minus 16 cancel. And I am left with uh, something much more simple there. So remember, uh, this x over here actually has an invisible 1 out in front of it, so we need to use that to help us. We have 1 minus 9, which means that uh, those are enemies, so we're going to subtract them, and we're going to get negative 8x on this side, and then over on this side we have negative 16. So now we need to get x by itself, and x is being multiplied by negative 8. So the opposite of multiplication is to divide. So I'm going to divide out my negative 8. And when we do that, the negative 8s cancel to a 1. And what I'm left with is just plain old x equals 2. And so that's my answer. So if I plug 2 back into the equation, I get 2 plus 16 equals 9 times 2. So that's 18 equals 18 which is true. So that means we got it right. Okay, let's take a look at number two. So I'm going to draw my line and I'm going to notice that I have y's on both sides of the equation this time. So once again, I'm going to move my variables over and move my constants over. So I'm going to take my 12y and move it over to the other side by subtracting it. And then at the same time, I'm going to add my 70 to both sides because that will move it over to the other side there. So when we do that, 12y minus 12y is 0, negative 70 and positive 70 is 0. So we're left with 4 minus 12. Those are enemies, so they're going to be subtracted. So we get negative 8y. And then 70 and 2 are friends, so we're going to add them. So that's 72. So now we're going to get rid of the negative 8 that's in front of the y there by dividing it out, and we get as an answer, y is equal to negative 9. Okay, so to plug that back in to see if we did it right, 4 times negative 9 minus 70 should equal 12 times negative 9 plus 2. And when I finish that, I get negative 106 equals negative 106, which is true, so we know that that works. Okay, let's take a look at number four. So on number four, I notice that the first thing I need to do is distribute. 
So I need to multiply in my 3 on this side, and I also need to multiply in my 2 on this side. So that's going to give me 3g minus 3 times 7 is 21, and then 2 times 10 is 20, plus 2 times g is 2g. Okay, so now it's more simple. Now it's simplified. We can start moving things around. So I'm going to move my 2g over underneath the 3g. And at the same time, I'm going to add 21 to both sides to move the, that over as well. And so what happens is that the g's cancel on the right and the constants cancel on the left. So that now we have all of our constants on one side and all of our variables on the other side. So to simplify, 3 minus 2 is 1. So that we could just write g. And then over here, we have 41. So g is equal to 41. There's nothing to divide out this time. OK, let's plug it in and see if we got it right. OK, when I plugged it in, I ended up getting 102 equals 102. And that's true, so we know we did it correct. I would like for you to pause the video, please, and do number 3 on your own. OK, when I did number 3, I got p is equal to 10. And when I plugged it in, it ended up working, so I know I got it right. On number six, I'm going to draw my line and I'm going to move my variables around. So I'm going to add four over seven W to both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to add 11 to both sides so that the variables are now gone from the right and the constants are now gone from the left. Okay, so three plus four is seven. So this is going to be 7 over 7w. And on the right-hand side, I get 11. 7 over 7 cancels to a 1. So that means that this is just w equals 11. OK, I'm going to plug it in now and see if I got it right. And when I plugged it in, I ended up getting negative 44 over 7 equals negative 44 over 7. So I know it's correct. I would like for you to pause the video, please, and do number 5 on your own. OK, for number 5, I got n is equal to 0 0.7. And when I plugged it in, it was correct. Let's take a look at number 7. One movie club charges $100 membership fee and $10 for each movie. Another movie club charges no membership fee, but the movies cost $15 each. Write and solve an equation to find the number of movies that you need to buy for the cost of each movie club to be the same. So let's think about this. We have one movie club, which is $100 and $10 for each movie. So I'm going to say $100 plus $10 for each movie. We have another one that has no membership fee, but the movies cost a little bit more. They're $15 each. So that's going to be no membership fee and $15 each for each movie. Now we want to find out when they are the same. So I'm going to put an equal sign here. And now we just need to solve for the m. So I'm going to do what I've been doing. I'm going to subtract 15m from both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract my 100 from both sides so that I have my variables on one side and my constants on the other side because these cancel out here. So I'm going to be left with 15 minus 10 is 5. So that would be negative 5m is 0 minus 100 is negative 100. So I'm going to divide by negative 5 on both sides. And negative 100 divided by negative 5 is 20. So m is equal to 20. So that means that it's after 20 movies, the cost will be the same. OK, that's it. Thanks so much for watching.